the promise is not truthful or authentic and the, it's theatre and it's not based on reality. It's, it's quite misleading for consumers to think that. Oh, Alexa, can you add Avon snacks? and Bugs, Bickies, Mushies, Mozzie Spray, Palmy, Pavs, Bob Rolls, and Bubbles to my shopping list, please. Too easy. I've added to your shopping list. Thanks, Alexa. I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Hooroo. There we have it. Alexa, Justin, I'm gonna throw straight to you because you may not <laughs> recognize this individual. But yes. just curious, get your thoughts. What did you think of this creative? So when I first watched it, you know, I, I forgot that it was an Australian ad. So in a way, I had a little bit probably of a different reaction than you did, because 70 percent of the terms that are used and slang that was used or whatever, uh, I did not understand. And so, you know, from a U.S. perspective, it was just hitting on uh, stereotypes of Australians and in a way showcasing how the amazing technology of Alexa, that uh, no matter what type of English you speak, that it works. Unfortunately, that was not the point of these ads. <laughs> and unfortunately, these ads were playing in Australia, where I imagine that a lot of the terms used in the one that you, the one that we just showed and a couple others that I looked in terms of the campaign, you know, it seemed to me like, you know, had a lot of um, Australian cliches, you know, I, I don't think you guys go around saying like, that's not a knife, but I think that, you know, ones that, that are familiar to me. So I imagine that it didn't have the same effect for you guys over there than it did on me. That being the case, trying to see those ads for what, from an Australian perspective, I was a little bit dumbfounded because you guys in Australia have a sort of track record for creating crazy uh, commercials, you know, uh, like really kind of funny off the wall type stuff it's been for like 20, 30 years. It's, it's like a kind of a cliche of a Australian uh, television ads. And, uh, you know, Alexa has some pretty damn good ads and yeah, they were made for the Super Bowl, but I mean, Alexa body ad with Michael P. Jordan yeah. where, you know, or the uh, um, Alexa loses her voice uh, and those use celebrities. That's why I'm talking about them. But the difference there is with those is that the celebrity was not the idea. There was a bigger idea. It could, it could have been any hot guy at the <laughs> moment. Right. And here in, the, in these spots, uh, what was her, the actress's name again? Uh, Sophie with, Monk. Sophie Monk, it was like, just literally like watching a person use Alexa. Like, and it's like, just happened to be a celebrity. So I'd imagine that uh, in, in this case, it didn't, I mean, it definitely didn't do much for Alexa. It did probably a lot for her. Um, <laughs> it, it's hard to say with, with an app, well, sorry, an app, a, a product as famous as Alexa and a, a person as famous in Australia as her, you bring it together. So it's hard to say if one distracts from the other or whatnot, or if it has zero effect, and maybe it's just about getting the Alexa name out there and it doesn't really matter. But from a perspective of effectiveness, I'd imagine that it's not that much of an effective ad because in this case, the celebrity, there's no idea that it's not funny unless I'm missing some Australian humor that was in there. Yeah. And, and and the celebrity distracts from the product in this case. Nothing happens. Like, I don't understand, you know. <laughs> the, the interesting thing with this is I think context has a huge amount to play. Okay. You know, this is why I was really curious to, to share this with you, not knowing the context. Because I think when you understand the context, it, it may hit home. So it's interesting that 70% of the terms, you just had no idea what she was on about. <laughs> um so Sophie Monk, bubbles, bubbles, something, bubbles, I don't, yeah. champagne, avo, avocado, yeah, that I got, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, Bickies, Bang biscuits, palmy, you know, uh, pav, like it's they're all very well known or Aussie slang terms, right? But the interesting thing I thought with this is uh, they've leveraged the same formula. 
that has been very, very successful worldwide. You know, celebrity in situation, i.e. their home, and it's an engaging style dog dialogue. Like it's, there's some interesting things that happen. Like I'd say Alexa's done an amazing job over the last few years of building out their platform. Like mm-hmm. I think they've, they've leveraged celebrity well compared to most other brands. When they stack all these terms together, Avo, Snags, Bickies, Mushies, Mozzie Spray, Palmy, Pav, Fog Rolls, Bubbles. No, <laughs> no Australian talks like that. Like ever. <laughs> really? Okay. Like that's that's just like that's that's taking the Aussie bogan to the next level. Like that's just like what? Who who does that? No one. Like, do you think it was written by an Australian? I mean, yeah. I, I think it's a hundred percent written by an Australian. But I think what they're trying to do is triple down on the Aussie slang and bogan nature of it because that really breaks prediction. So, like, when I heard that, I'm like, you've got my attention because no one speaks like that. Like, you've just thrown every Mm -hmm. Aussie slang into a really condensed sentence really fast. And that's where I'm like, whoa, you got me. What's going on here? And then I'm like, okay, so there's a lot of Australians that weave these type of words and have quite thick accents. And Sophie actually has quite a thick Australian accent, which is hard to understand for some. Um, and she's she's quite well known for being a bit of an Aussie bogan. And, you know, she smokes and she drinks and, and all the rest of it. And she was on The Bachelorette and, and so forth. But um, where I think they were going here is to show a bit of a point of difference. So you got Google Home or Google Nest and Alexa. How do you actually show a bit of a point of difference between the two? And I know they've both got their own strengths. I think they're just trying to demonstrate it doesn't matter how bogan or how thick your accent is, we're still going to understand you because they've laid it on very heavy from an Australian perspective. And I think this is where context or or being in in that situation, you can get um, a better feel for it. So they've laid it on really thick to emphasize the point that Alexa can have a normal conversation with Australian, even with a thick Bogan accent. Mm-hmm. I see. Has anyone tried to actually take her list and say it to Alexa? And and um, would, would Alexa actually reply the way that it replied? Or, or is there a bit of theater that's involved in this? Uh, because I think what I'm saying there is I think there's a missed opportunity Uh, If that's if what you're saying is the case, which I I think that it is, then that that list, you know, it's like in the U.S. when I was a kid growing up, they had like Big Mac, McDeal, a quarter pounder with some cheese, filet, fish, hamburger, cheeseburger, happy. Right. So it's like you have the potential of like taking that list and turning it like even her. She's a musician, like turn it into a song, whatever. But it'd be really cool that if you were in Australia and you said what she said to your Alexa, that it that she had some sort of like uh, pre-recorded, like some sort of like on brand response that like kind of referred to the commercial or, or even like had uh, her, like her voice, like respond, you know what I mean? Like I, I would imagine that, you know, that, that could be kind of cool. Um, you know and if it, if, if it did respond to all, all of that, which I, it can't, right. Because those are not brand products. So, which to me, again, is what's the point of the ad. If there's a little bit of theater in it and tongue in cheek, then fine, that's cool. But it also creates a little bit of, lying the product doesn't do that it's not as easy as that it's not as i know i'm being a little bit of a downer on it (laughs) a little bit you know it all it all depends but what you said made a lot of sense i actually love that idea because you could then potentially make it into a a bit of a competition or whatever it is that if you feel yourself you know reading that to alexa and alexa responds in that particular way you know you go into the draw to win a you know ultimate amazon package or, or whatever it may be you know, to like, that's, that's got legs or that's an interesting idea or something worth exploring. It's well, yeah. I imagine too, because when Alexa's in the room with the TV and somebody says, when the celebrity says, Hey, Alexa, Alexa always kind of responds and it's, you know, and it's, but unfortunately it's usually like, I, I'm sorry. I didn't understand that, which kind of like at the same time ruins the effect of the commercial. So I can imagine like if it could sense that it was getting it from the commercial and (laughs) interacted it with some way or, you know, and it goes with the the other spots too. You know, actually, with all of them, if you could have the celebrity saying something, and then like, whenever, and it's catchphrasey enough. So when you you ask Alexa a ridiculous question that a celebrity asks it, you know, it it has a sort of on brand response or leads you to that movie or 
plays the music. I don't know. You know, it could be like a whole integrated type I of think thing, just which even if you had an Alexa in your room and it heard that spot or that creative or you said yeah. it to it, it just came back with like four or five very Aussie responses. And you could see people actually recording that and laughing like or even updating it. That's that's really sure. funny, interesting, but it just demonstrates we get the Aussie vernacular and we get and I'd okay. suggest Alexa, I don't know. I'm now wanting to go and try. Does it pick up these words? Or okay, does... so, go, so go and try. And then on the next episode, you're going to have to come back and re record what I, <laughs> I, I want you to record it, though. I want you to record doing it and see. And then uh, let's see what happens. Because again, uh, but, but to your point, if the promise is not truthful or authentic and the, it's theatre and it's not based on reality, it's it's quite misleading for consumers to think that because yeah. like uh, Alexa, yeah. Google home, Google nest, we've moved through early adopters, you know, very much moving through early majority. It's how do we pick up more customers and have a wider bandwidth of individuals to buy these products and get them in home. So this is trying to appeal more to the mass than, than early adopters. Yeah. 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 But then again, the, Alexa's been a ton in cheek thing. And I still have to say that I still think like the Alexa body you know, the, the overly sexual one with Michael P. Jordan, where, you know, it's, you know, where it's the person and where Alexa becomes the celebrity. Um, and the Alexa loses the voice where, where the celebrities chime in and give the answer because, you know, like to me, that was, to, to me, that was almost a better idea of a better use of celebrity I always get wary about celebrity endorsing a product, using a product because the celebrity distracts. But when the celebrity becomes part of the idea or part of the joke, like it did in the other ones, like that's create turning the celebrity into a character, right? Or in this case, actually turning them into the product, you know, the celebrity doesn't distract as much right? because the, the idea is bigger. And I, I have more to say on that as we go through these other ideas. Well, so. it's interesting because, yeah, we'll, we'll dig into that into the maybe the next section then. Yeah. Okay.